Hey everybody and welcome to Lex's World and CO2 102. So today in an episode for serious and commercial size gardeners, uh, let's this time dive more deeply into the permanent style CO2 systems, as well as more extensive tips on troubleshooting a garden's environment when there's a CO2 system in it. If you need to brush up on the basics of how CO2 works with plants and indoor greenhouses, go back and watch CO2 101. I'll link to it below because I'm gonna assume you know the basics for this one. So first, let's talk about burner versus compressed tank systems. To me, they can both work just fine, but it's more of a question of what's the most efficient long-term option in your situation. Burners are a type of permanent, non-mobile CO2 generator that uses a pilot light with open flame burners to burn oxygen that's already in the air. You can operate them manually, but most folks at minimum run them on a 24-hour timer. Burners have a few issues. The first one is that they generate a lot of heat and that makes them tricky to run in smaller rooms. Also, if you live in a warm climate already, you likely cannot use a CO2 burner system because the temperatures will just become unmanageable even with LED lights. Also, a burner will cost you more upfront versus compressed tanks, and there's side costs as well. For safety reasons, they really should have at least a CO2 monitor running alongside them in the same room. A monitor slash controller is ideal, and they are a bit more of a pain to set up because you gotta hang them from the ceiling, you gotta run power to them, and you gotta attach a fuel source. But Burners are roughly three times cheaper to operate per day than a compressed tank. If you have a relatively easy nearby access to propane and natural gas, which are the two main fuel types for burners, you got it made in the shade with a burner. So for a long-term vision of a permanent, large greenhouse that won't be uprooted for years, burners are the way to go in my opinion. You also need to size your burner right to get those cost efficiency benefits. You need a big 10 burner unit for every 1500 square feet of greenhouse, an 8 burner unit for every 650 square feet, and the more commonly available 4 burner unit for a room that's about 250 square feet. As usual, I'll link to burners and all the other systems down in the video description if you'd like to take a look at some specs and prices more closely. Now to the tanks. Those are super easy to set up, though they look intimidating. What makes them cool is how mobile of a system they are, and they work for those smaller spaces. The mobility especially is a selling feature. Bring them in one day, carry them out the next if you need to. It's just compressed carbon dioxide in a tank that has an on-off valve on top, attached to an emitter that consists of a couple of valves and meters. More modern emitters have the regulator and flow meter inside a single unit instead of split off into two gauges, like this. Those are the ones I prefer, and you can usually buy these systems all in a package. The question that towers above the rest with CO2 tanks is, which size should I get and how do I refill them conveniently? Long story short, for size, the 20 pound tank is the most likely best one for you when you're unsure. And if you're really thinking, no, your space is really huge, or you really want it to be a long time between refills, then go for a 35 pound tank. There's really no need to go any bigger. If you're going bigger, think about a burner. You can refill or exchange the tanks when they run empty in many welding supply shops, hydroponic stores, or beverage supply companies. And another couple of tips on the tanks before we leave them be. You should, whenever possible, have them placed outside the actual grow space and emitting into it. Where the emitter actually shoots the CO2 out, have an oscillating fan to help the CO2 spread. Furthermore, you should always protect the valve on top of the tank from damage and you should always have the tank tucked safe and snug into a corner somewhere where it won't be damaged or tripped into because these are big tanks full of compressed gas. Brutal accidents have happened with people who didn't treat the tanks carefully. Anyways, the final common question people tend to have once they start running their CO2 system is, whoa, I can't exhaust while the CO2 is running, 
but I'm getting heat build up during the day. How do I keep the heat down while keeping the CO2 in? Well, you have a few options. First, the minimum that you can do is exhaust during the night only. That can be set up with a simple 24-hour timer. Ideally, you should be able to turn off the CO2 at lights out anyway. The second resort is to do alternating exhaust and CO2. This again can be done with 24-hour timers or you can use a CO2 controller slash monitor that'll kick on the exhaust fan only when the temperature gets too hot and turn off the CO2 flow at the same time. For extra cooling, you can resort to a recirculating air conditioner as well, which is effective in terms of changing temperature, but it's inefficient in terms of electrical consumption. Also, UHID bulb growers can reduce heat by switching your lights either to tube-style reflectors uh, or hood-style with glass, and that way you can run them on a separate ventilation system that's from the rest of the room and keep the heat totally out of the equation. And by the way, today's episode is brought to you guys by TNB Naturals, makers of pre-built chemical reaction CO2 canisters. A link to them in the video description, and we'll be diving into just the topic of chemical reaction-based systems in CO2 103, which will also be the final installment of the whole CO2 topic, and we'll be doing a nice big giveaway in that episode, so tune in. So yeah guys, uh, let me know in the comments below how you're all liking this breakdown of big topics into two or three medium length episodes like this, and maybe I'll do more of it in the future. On that note, if you're new here, subscribe, and if you found this interesting, hit that like button, and we'll see you next time.